Okay, good. On air. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the ACS webinar on solar PV system. Uh, my name is Ringo Mack. I would be the moderator for today's session. And uh, today's title, this session's title is Solar PV End of Life Management. So we are thrilled to have uh, our three distinguished guests to join us to share their thoughts about this topic. So uh, first, allow me to introduce our three speakers. First one is uh, Mr. Ken Tai, who is the project manager of Carbon Care InnoLab. Hi, Ken. He is specialized in the solar PV system. And throughout this three and a half years, he has uh, helped out a lot, like uh, close to 50 NGO in Hong Kong to install different system. So say a few words. Hi to the audience, uh, Ken. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Ken from Carbon Inno, Inno Lab. Uh, nice to meet you all. OK, thank you, Ken. So the next one I would like to introduce is uh, Dr. Saharera Chowhury. Dr. Uh, Chowhury is the project leader and head of research of the Health and Environmental Research Center Faculty of Environmental Management, Prince of Songkla, University, Thailand. So the, Dr. Chow Harry, just uh, say a few words to our audience. Oh, so he is kind of uh, not in the, in, the, in, in the screen yet. Okay, no worry, okay. He will join us back soon. Okay, uh, the next guest I would like to introduce is Dr. Chen Wai Sing, uh, Associate Professor of the Department of Resources Engineering, National Qinggong University of Taiwan. Hi, Doc. Hi, Professor Chen. Hi, hello, everyone. Hi. Um, Just say a few words to our Chen. audience. <laughs> yes, this is Wei Shen Chen from uh, Tainan, Taiwan. Okay. And, uh, uh, it's I'm very happy to join this section. So uh, I hope everyone have some something to get back to your home uh, in this uh, section. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Professor Chen. So uh, we having uh, Dr. Chauhari back now. Well, we... Okay, I think some technical issue. <laughs> we have been chatting with him for like uh, 20 minutes already. So no worry. Okay. So maybe uh, while we are waiting for Dr. Chowhury, we would like to touch on a little bit uh, of today's topic. So um, as a matter of fact, in the Asia Pacific, uh, solar PV system is kind of new in, in this decade. Uh, um, in after 2020, after 2015, it's become popular in, in the um, Asia Pacific area. So that's why we understand that a lot of the people are interested in setting up their own uh, PV system. But also they were they have been worried about, okay, even though the lifespan of this PV system would be like a 20 years plus, but still the O&M, the operation and the maintenance of the system is would play a key part of the uh, whole thing of the investment of uh, how to save energy, how to help the climate change. This is part one. And then part two is a point end of life system. So would that be a waste? A lot of the material, a lot of this uh, toxic thing uh, needed to be disposed. So that's why we have set up this session, uh, having the expert to share the idea on uh, this particular um, point. So the, basically, I think, um, Ah, hi, we got uh, <laughs> Dr. Chowhury back. Okay, Dr. Chowhury, so the, I have introduced you already. Uh, so maybe you can say a few words uh, to the audience. Okay. Hello, sorry, uh, I was uh, disconnected due to the internet. So I'm back already and uh, nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chowhury. So with uh, without further ado, so I would pass the coming seven to 10 minutes to our colleague, Ken Tai, to share his 
Leo and his idea of the uh, of this topic. Ken, please. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ringo. Um, one second. Let me share my PowerPoint. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to my fellow guest speaker and audiences, depending where you physically are. Good to see you. I'm Ken from Common, Inno, uh, Common Care InnoLab, and today I'll briefly talk about the difficulties or challenges in PV recycling we are and will be facing in a macroscopic point of view. So a little bit of background. Okay. Um, between 2019 and 2023, around 380 megawatt, <clears throat> uh, megawatt peak of PV panels was installed since the fee-in tariff was introduced in uh, 2019. So that is roughly about um, 1 million of PV panels installed in Hong Kong. Uh, given the, the average lifespan of the PV panels, which is about like 20 to 30 years, Solar waste in Hong Kong should become significant at around 2040 and peak at around 2050 with at least 30,000 tons of solar waste. And this is just the case for Hong Kong, which is, to remind you all, which is a very, very small place. Globally, the International Renewable Energy Agency, ARENA, projected there will be at least 15 million tons and 60 million tons of solar waste in 2040 and 2050, respectively. So we will need to all work together to find a solution on the solar waste before 2050, right? Actually, uh, not really. The issue is actually more urgent than it sounds. The above figure, 50 million and 60 million, uh, given by ARENA, was based on a regular loss model. Um, oops, I skipped too fast. Uh, but you can see in the assumption during the regular loss model, they assume most PV can reach like uh, their full lifespan, which is like 30 years. And not only until 40 years, 99% of the PV panels will be uh, discarded. So this is more like a very optimistic um, case. In reality, in reality, if we take early loss into account, the global number of solar waste rises to a whopping 32 million and 78 million respectively. Uh, from the screen, you can see the early loss scenario assumption, but um, to cut it short, early loss means premature, premature uh, failure or significant performance drop before reaching the expected expected lifespan. It can be caused by a, a multiple of factors, for example, like natural disaster, typhoon, uh, heavy snow, or simply poor workmanship during installation, um, micro cracks, overheating, or at last, simply a very poor maintenance scheme of the system. So you have hotspots, you will have uh, dead inverters, these are all factors for the early losses. Residential and commercial PV system, which for the sake of discussion, uh, means system that is under 50 kilowatt peak. So those really small uh, PV systems will be subject to a poorer maintenance scheme because of the cost uh, that you will need to invest into it. And hence, they will be harder to reach the full lifespan of the PV system. So actually, the solar waste will start surfacing in the coming few years and grow steadily every year instead of, boom, now this is 2040, here's your 32 million tons of retired PV panels, recycle them. It will be more linear, like the graph on the left. And the graph is not in scale, so don't take the numbers too seriously. In fact, countries such as uh, Thailand or Indonesia, they all estimated their solar waste will reach at least 8,000 tons annually by 2030. And uh, to my understanding, if I'm wrong, please uh, correct me. The current solution to the solar waste is still sending them to the landfills. 
So 8,000 per year, 8,000 tons per year, uh, which sounds a lot. And in fact, it is a lot to the environment. But unfortunately, it is not really that much in the eyes of those rec uh, recycling companies. Oops, my bad. Hold on. I've talked to a few recycling companies in Hong Kong regarding the solar waste. Like, uh, do you are are you interested in helping Hong Kong handling those waste? Um, the first question from them is always, how much waste per year are we talking about? Uh, just a reference for everyone's uh, just a number for everyone's full reference. Hong Kong is dealing um seventy thousand tons of electronic waste. Uh, in twenty twenty three, in the past few years, actually, which means even if we dismantle every PV panels in Hong Kong right now, which is around like uh a million panels, which is about like uh twenty thousand tons, that simply means uh represent only one third of the electronic waste in Hong Kong that they're dealing annually. So sadly, in this uh, revenue-driven market, this volume is just not that appealing to the recycling companies. And the supplies will be, well, uh, as I said, limited because uh, even Thailand is talking about like 8,000 tons, well, only. And um, aside from the volume, Specific methods will be required to handle the materials in the PV panels, such as tempered glass, the back sheet, the solar cells, which I'm sure my fellow speaker will talk about more in depth, so I'll not really go into details for now. Investing a whole new factory lines to handle such small volumes might just not be re realistic enough for the recycling plants. So... What can we do? Uh, first of all, lobbying the government for a law to handle the waste is always like a solution to everything. They make a disposal law. All stake, uh, stakeholders will need to comply it. But um, of course, they will need to comply it. Will it be effective? Uh, this will be a really big question marks. So uh, what I what we was thinking for the past few months, well, is that maybe an international alliance will be needed. Amassing the solar waste across uh, Eastern Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, mostly the uh, countries or places uh, that it's not uh, handling the solar waste right now. For example, uh, I think Thailand, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, Hong Kong, of course, since I'm here, um, places that do not really have the capability or do not have the urge to handle the solar waste properly, amassing every waste from them might be a way going forward. So if we can group all the countries, then we can um, put it in a weird way. Uh, we can secure a sustainable supply of solar waste annually, which uh, makes it more worthwhile for the um, recycling companies to invest into it. And the recycling process can be divided into two parts. The first part can be done locally, um, first of all, the aluminum frame, the junction box, which accounts for like 30% of the PV panel mass can be disassembled locally. And uh, since the te technology are already in place and the recycled, uh, the recovered materials, well, mainly aluminum, are easily reusable. So uh, this part can be done locally to reduce the mass, the volume, uh, well, the physical physical volume of the PV panels. And um well where, where was I? Yeah. And this part can be done locally. 
And what I was thinking, it's the remaining 70%, namely the tempered glass, the solar cells, the back sheets. Those, I think, can be stored locally until they reach a certain amount and then ships overseas to a, uh, I was thinking something called centralized processing, processing center to be dealt with. In this case, uh, that particular processing center, whatever that will be, can ensure the supply annually, so it will be more worthwhile to invest into it, so it can be more cost effective. Moreover, uh, that processing center hence can choose the best solution to recycle the temper glass and silicons, depending how we want to reuse them. For example, if we want to build a uh, new PV panels, we will we can savor the tempered glass and uh, preserve the imp uh, the purity of the silicon, and then use it for new PV panels. Or, well, maybe PV panels are already outdated by then, and then we can use those materials for uh, we can rejuvenate them into new building materials such as such as bricks and stuff. Uh which requires two totally different technologies. But my point is uh, how to recycle them. Uh, we have options, but it will work only if uh, we can invest into it and someone can uh, seize the worth and willing to invest into it. And of course, this is, uh, I was talking a really ideal uh, scenario uh, we will face difficulties uh, if we want to push into these directions. Uh, first of all, there will be a significant additional cost, uh, energy consumption and emissions when we are transporting the solar waste. And we might need to deal with uh, international import-export regulations. Um, moreover, uh, some, uh, some type of panels, for example, like cadmium terride, they will be toxic when dissembling, so we might need to deal with those toxicity uh, in that country. And I'm sure there will be a lot of issues which I can't think of right now. So this will be a uh, very long shot, but I do hope it still can be a way forward uh, for uh, right now the Asia countries to handle the solar waste. And actually my point is we will need to work on it as soon as possible because the ways are coming already. So um, this concludes my two cents on to the, today's topic and I will pass the floor back to Ringo. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your experience and the uh, knowledge about the local, the Hong Kong PV system. Okay. Um, uh, a reminder to all participants, we have a, a, a great number, a large number of participants already joined it. So if in any particular topic or issue that you would like to address to that particular speaker, so you could start uh, coming in with the question in the Q&A box. So we will gather it and then uh, in the due time, we will send it to the um, speaker for sharing in our Q&A section. Uh, you are welcome to put down your questions, okay? Thank you, Ken. Okay, now the second speaker, we would like to introduce um, from Thailand, our friend from Thailand, uh, Dr. Chow Hari. So Dr. Chow Hari, I pass the- uh, Thank Dr. you, Chow Mr. Ingo. Yeah, okay, your time. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ringo, and uh, dear colleagues and friends. Good afternoon. And this is Dr. Shaharia Choudhury. You can call me Dr. Shah. And I'm working as a project leader at Prince of Songkhla University and also the head of research. So today's my topic uh, to think, uh, add with my colleagues that the future of solar uh, managing end of life system uh, for greener tomorrow. So we are working for sustainable future. So this is just brief introduction about how what, what does it mean actually I I know all of you have idea about solar panel so when it a single cell we call cell and when all panel so we call solar cells all together so we we 
need to not only need to uh, recycle the solar panel, we, all, we should be also concerned about the supporting part like inverter, uh, battery, cable, other things, because that also uh, will insist our recycling industry to, to combine together to economy friendly. And next, so I briefly introduce you that uh, the solar generation, there are three kinds of solar cell generation. First generation, we call silicon-based solar cell, second thin film based solar cell and third emerging technology. So still now what we can say that end of life, that's a silicon based solar cell, which is lifetime 20 to 25 years, but efficiency is still now 20 to 25 more or less, but it depends on manufacturers uh, and also the materials. Second is a thin film based solar cell where uh, we, we do have uh, the amorphous silicon solar cell, uh, Japan or, or other first world country, they are still using, but uh, we can say that the cadmium tolerite CDTE, which is the only one company in the world, that's the first solar. They are producing uh, CDTE solar cell. And third generation is, uh, as you know, all of you concentrate photovoltaic at the same time, perovskite solar cell, which is achieved more than 32% efficiency but it still now is under uh, research R&D due to the lack of the lifetime, very short lifetime. So if we think that if when uh, Paroskai solar cell uh, coming in the market, so we need to think about how to recycle because uh, 20 years back when we think some product into the market, we just launched product and we just uh, marketing. But right now for sustainable world, bring any product we need to think how we'll manage in future so that's why it still is under research here we can see the current uh, although my colleague he mentioned about this uh, here you can see that the the current situation of the investment according to the arena we can see that the huge investment on solar pv compared to the other renewable energy and we can see that in 2013, it was less than $100 billion, which is 2020, within a decade, it became a 300%, more than $300 billion nearly is invested already for solar. And also we can see the electricity generation from 2020, uh, 2011 and 2023 is dramatical increase uh, within this time. So here is actually some backdated data why I want to show that we already cross our cumulative data. That means we predict that we will install 400, but it's already over 800. That means it's dramatically increased day by day. What we are predicting, we are, uh, we are like uh, uh, fulfill our requirement earlier. So that's why is the big issue to concern about solar PV recycling. Here is uh, the market share. We can see that uh, silicon-based solar cell by 2014, it was 92%. But I do believe that uh, according to the research, although we predicted it would be 50, but still now it ate not less than 80% silicon-based solar cell. And uh, third generation is still working actually. Um, it's still we are not available uh, in the market, it, it will come. So he, there are many reasons. Earlier, my colleague also mentioned about the, the solar PV. Uh, we, we don't need to think about that, the solar PV end of life, but also there are many reasons it can become a waste. So here we can see the transportation facilities, natural digester, uh, the, uh, manufacturing problem, and also due to the power loss or failure, many reasons it can become a waste. So we need to combine together this the uh, issue that we, why we need solar PV recycling. Here is the status of uh, solar PV waste. Uh, we can, we are predicting that by end of 2050, it will become a 60 uh, to 78,000 ton, million ton waste. And if we think about uh, 2030, 1.7 or 8 million ton. So it's less, uh, it's more than that and which is produce 60 million new solar panel. And economically, we can say that is uh, equivalent to 450 million USD. So this is the big industry in future, upcoming uh, recycling industry, they will contribute. So why we need recycling? Just only, just only solar panel become a waste 
or no, we there are many reasons because solar panels are fabricated from hazardous material. If we think about that lead, uh, titanium, cadmium is very dangerous for human health. So if we think safety first, then we need to save ourselves first. Then we will think about how to make it economically. So the, this is the, I just briefly show you, uh, and it, it did many benefit, not only ourselves, it's also beneficiary from our environment. It's also beneficial for our ecology, everything. So that's why we need to concern about this. Here I saw some uh, like cadmium, how, what kind of problem actually, if we just dispose uh, damping in soil field. So cadmium very dangerous for human uh, brain, kidney, uh, like uh, heart disease, many, many disease actually it will come if we not uh, recycle properly or does not dispose properly. So uh, right now, uh, there are many challenges. If we think about this, technical challenges, there are many recycling, although we are saying that we are doing recycling, but we do not have a specific for, especially for our, this area and economical challenges. How can make it like a few days ago, I'm talking with one uh, stakeholder. So they are asking me that, oh, we, you are asking about a solar cell recycling but uh, we can buy very cheap panel from uh, market. So why we need to cycle? I said that, okay, we are, we are coming with the solution why you need recycling. So that, that, that's the big challenges that between gap between the stakeholders, different stakeholders, policymakers and manufacturers. And regula uh, regulatory challenges still have lack of challenges. So here we can see how far we are like Africa and Asia, if we compare with uh, uh, Europe, Europe already have existing technology and existing policy. If we compare with Europe, we still ongoing process. We need to go so far, especially for Asia and Africa. So we need to work on even America, North America also below the Europe. So we need to, we need to work on this uh, to collaboratively. Uh, here we can see that uh, the solar, oh, sorry, their uh, recycling process, this, uh, this is uh, my previous work, and uh, we can see there are many actually recycling technology, existing technology, uh, like uh, the, some of them, they are grinding technology, just only grinding and then separate um, all component together, uh, but also have thermal process, chemical treatment, uh, so here we can see that what, what would happen, we mechanically separate uh, the solar panel and then thermally treatment to isolate the solar cell and uh, chemically uh, treatment for purify the uh, uh, semiconductor materials, then we can re prepare for reuse that materials. At the same time, this is also like uh, they are grinding uh, method, like a mechanical process, uh, grinding the uh, the materials and then they separate uh, using technology for separate. And uh, so this, this recycling process, we can also the, add the, currently we can add the AI technology. So, so new technology we can add and to make more smooth recycling because uh, recycling materials that also the challenges of human health. If the, we do, that recycling by physically, so it can be hazardous for also the those person are working in the in the, uh, the recycling industry. That they are safety also the important. So in that case, we can use the automation technology or AI technology for uh, make more convenient the recycling. So we can reuse mechanical process. We can reuse glass, metal, plastic, silicon, uh, seventy to ninety five percent. Uh, the, uh, and also thermal process, we can use material like silicon, metal, glass, 80 to 85%, chemical treatment, high purity, so 85 to 99% material we can uh, reuse. So here we can see that the existing technology, that uh, the maturity of technology. So environmental impact, here we can see that what kind of uh, reducing the landfill waste, uh, recovery valuable material. Earlier I mentioned about this, uh, the lower carbon footprint, uh, create a green job. So it can it can have the new job opportunity for future generation and supporting the circular economy. 
and improving the public health. So it can help also our improving the public health and promotion of sustainable practice. These all things actually uh, we can get from promoting this sustainable recycling, managing the PV waste. So best practices for industry, for what we can do comprehensive recycling process. We, as we know, the solar, uh, fast solar, they have their own recycling uh, recycling plan. They take back their panel and they do the their recycling plan in fast solar. And also the extended uh, the producer responsibility, like uh, maybe in here we, we can use example solar power in Europe and uh, collaboration between recycling facilities and uh, innovation recycling technology, life cycle analysis, design and recycling, every day improving also the recycling technology. How can we, we purify more if we can, like uh, think about solar cell? Uh, and also the public private partnership earlier I my my colleague he mentioned about that we cannot do alone like uh, we, we need public partnership uh, public private partnership educational awareness like our uh, generation new generation they should know that the about the bad drawback of solar panel it's not about bad impact uh, we we can't deny that right now in this world we can use anything without impact but we can minimize or uh, minimize the environmental impact but we cannot deny that zero emotion but we can a minimum uh, impact and we need still need to, to implement the policy here just example case study the how uh, fast solar they are doing their existing uh, recycling plan and they are all it also economical friendly uh, so here is the key point, actually, what we need uh, to do and what, what we should take action. So important of managing solar PV end of life, uh, current state uh, projection of PV waste, key challenges of PV waste management, uh, best practices, regulation landscape, and environmental and social uh, benefits, uh, effect of uh, end of life management. Action, we need to take action, importance of stakeholder collaboration, need policy development and enforcement, encouragement involved recycling technology and promotion of sustainable practice. So if we want to uh, promote or accelerate the recycling PV technology, we need to promote PV installation. The more PV install, then more industry will grow up. So that's the main important. So we cannot directly focus on recycling. We need to also behind the PV installation. Because if we think, think about 20 years back, the phone, smartphone was so expensive because lack of users. Right now it's very cheap because lack of uh, the more users. So when we use more solar panel, so it can be the more economical friendly and we can recycle it. So that's why I, I, I say that this is uh, most important. Uh, and here is my some project I have done and some project ongoing. Uh, recently, I am developing as a project leader, Macung Korea Corporation Fund uh, uh, for Macung region. I'm going to develop the prototype, uh, business prototype for uh, Macung Nation. And the, our main objective to, uh, first of all, our main objective to talk to the business partner stakeholders, what kind of problem facing and why they are not eager to, uh, to work on this. What is the problem, main problem of this? So then we will start to solve that problem. It would be ongoing process. And we uh, we I, we develop some uh, lab scale uh, recycling plan, like we mentioned about uh, the future generation, Parvoskite, we need, we need also think about right now. And also we have some uh, Taiwan, uh, Southeast Asia, Taiwan University Network, one project about the awareness of uh, solar PV recycling. So we, we try to understand that the, our current generation, what they are thinking, because they are the future. So if they know right now, so we can solve it the future. future. And this is some of my work highlighted about uh, the solar PV recycling. Uh, we are still working on this. And my project just launched this month. Uh, we are we started already working with Macung Nation with Korea. 
And this is this is another thing we uh, devise. Like uh, earlier, I mentioned about that we we are thinking that solar panel only end of life, but some panel are not working. But our consumer they doesn't know. They have no idea. So we need uh, actually the third party who can monitoring the the panel health time by time. If uh, and we need some existing policy uh, return policy like uh, if panel are not working, how can get benefit, the mutual benefit, we need that kind of policy uh, to develop. Uh, recently, this panel I collect from hospital. So it's a new panel, but uh, due to the transportation problem, it break. So I collected it from check the efficiency and how the condition of solar panel. So that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a very sh uh, short brief of, about the solar recycling. Over to you, Mr. Ringo. Thank you, Dr. Chahadi. Um, uh, okay, it's uh, very informative and uh, to know more about your project and especially your point that the uh, economy of scale of using more PV system would help the overall situation. That's so true. We could witness these kind of electric car, electric ve vehicle has been a good example. Okay, uh, now I would like to invite the Professor Chen to share about his Taiwan experience on, on, on this PV system. Uh, Professor Chen, your time, please. Good. Okay, thank you, uh, our moderator. And uh, I think uh, today I'm going to talk about more about solar panel uh, recycling. Uh, at first, I have a briefing about the PV development, and then I have the, some uh, environmental impact on the uh, solar industry. And then uh, mostly talk about the solar panel recycling technology. And the mm -hmm. final several page is my uh, research result, and uh, you, you can have, have them now. For the for the solar panel, uh, before two thousand and thirty, there will be five hundred gigawatt, and then the China will be uh in the mostly is poly poly silicon ingot wafer cell and uh, module. The whole line of uh, manufacturing it is exceed eighty percent of the world world share. So. Is kind of China is kind of a big country of the manufacturing, and uh, I I think in the future there will be a lot of uh, so uh, PV panel will be need to be uh, recycling in the future, and then in Japan the needle is uh, collaborate with the PV cycle to keep the uh, collection system, and then they have uh, uh, some uh, recycling technology uh, in. Japan. So the new energy and the industry development organization uh, we call NIDO. NIDO has supposed some uh, companies in Japan to uh, set up the recycling technologies. And in United States, uh, uh, in the end of 2023, there was 177 uh, gigawatt. So uh, the Solar Energy Industry Association, SEIA, uh, S-E-I-A, uh, uh, they have the national pro uh, recycling program for the uh, their uh, first solar company, uh, their uh, their own cadmium, tellurium uh, solar cell panel. And besides that, they also collect the uh, silicon-based uh, solar panel recycling system. And in Taiwan, uh, in 2023, we have the 20, uh, 12.4 gigawatt uh, of the energy production in domestic. In Taiwan system, uh, in the solar PV uh, subsidy program is started in 2000. And then we uh, introduced the 2010, introduced <clears throat> feed-in tariff, tariff feed, uh, system, FIT system into Taiwan to become our major uh, new, new solar energy purchasing system. 
And then we have a medium solar roof project to uh, 2012 to try to increase our installation. And then we have two year solar PV pro promotion plan in uh, 2016. And we have a uh, green energy forward and 2017. And then we have two, uh, 2015 a uh, roadmap to uh, zero uh, carbon system. Okay, uh, for the uh, uh, environmental uh, impact for the uh, solar panel. Uh, so for the po polycrystal silicon, uh, mostly the material, it's glass, aluminum, EVA, and uh, copper, and several uh, uh, metals, and of course, the silicon cell. And then uh, those kind of stuff, material, as we have to think about to recycling. And in this kind of material, of course, we have the uh, lead, uh, the, the, the solder of the, the, the panel. So he, he has some lead problem. So, and then we have the cadmium. We have cadmium and terrarium. Also it's the toxic element. So we have to uh, worry about them to, uh, to the environmental impact. And then we have think about the recycling goal of the solar industry. We, we try to reduce the global production of solar module uh, waste and decrease the use of the raw materials and then increase the resource recovery rate. And then recycling precious metals and from in the PV cycle. Um, for the, uh, so far, Recycling technology in Japan. So we have mater Mitsubishi Material Corporation. They're using uh, the dis disassembling uh, component, the aluminum frame and the junction box. And then uh, the module will crush in into pieces. And then uh, the particle size sorting and then the color sorting to separate those the color silicone chips and metals. and uh, colorless uh, glasses. And so they're uh, trying to do this uh, recycling uh, technology. Uh, this technology has equipment uh, relative uh, simple and low cost, high sorting efficiency and good recovery rate. So, uh, but this is, uh, this process is unable to, uh, to deal with the small particles and unable to completely remove the EVA raising from the solar panel. And then low degree of the reuse of a tempered glasses in the solar panel. And then the, the second Japan company, Toho Kasei uh, Corporation, they also uh, remove dismantling the uh, aluminum frame and junction box and grinding uh, to remove the back sheet plastics and then grinding, remove the EVA and glasses and then they have a separation process A and process B. A is the uh, remove EVA from the recycling glass and separation process B is to remove the EVA from the uh, electric cell. And so they, they, this, this kind of uh, process also is good for the uh, recycling process. So it's also the physical sorting and the minimum uh, damage to raw material and tempered glass in uh, less damage and it's easier to uh, to recycle, to reuse in the solar industry. And dissolve EVA raising consume a lot of uh, organic solvent and high cost, of course. And the other company in Japan is Assist. Assist also are uh, remove the aluminum frame and the junction box and grinding and peel off the back sheet. And then uh, using a hard knife to separate the glass and the cell. And the wet process to remove the EVA, recover metal and silicone together. So there, that's the process. Also it's kind of a, a physical sorting and can recover a large portion of the tempered glass. 
the glass uh, surface is heat tempered treated, heat treated, making it difficult to reuse in the solar industry. Removing EVA raising using a large amount of organic uh, solvent and high cost, of course. And Sinu, Sinu is the total solution of, of this uh, uh, porous crystalline and uh, CI, CIS uh, thin film uh, solar panel. So there first, they also uh, dismantle aluminum frame and junction box, and then take take off the uh, back sheet uh, removal, and then go through the uh, incineration equipment to separate, to, to heat out the uh, EVA, and then uh, separate the cell, the conduct, conduction uh, material, and then the, the glasses uh, so they can separate those kind of uh, uh, material and back to their uh, solar industry. So this is able to uh, recover same film and silicon based solar panel together and high recovery rate and high purity. So of course they're using the thermal code, uh, the process. So the cost is very uh, high and uh, there's the, uh, of course, they are able to reuse their uh, tempered glass. And this is the first solar process that also have separate two differences. One is dismantling the, the, the whole pieces and uh, the, the, the left-hand side is the whole pieces of process and go through the whole pieces process. They can uh, try to reuse uh, those uh, uh, materials. And the other, uh, Right hand side is the threading process. The 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 PV panel is become a a, a pieces. It's try to uh, recycling material from uh, those uh, small particles, and their uh, process also is good for a recycling system for the uh, United States. So this is able to uh, completely recover solar panel and uh, reuse the, them to the solar industry, achieve the good resource re recycling efficiency. So also they're, they're also using the uh, thermal process. So the thermal cost is good, is high. The process is complicated and may, be, may not be cost effectively. Okay, is there are uh, efficient. See, it's not good enough. So uh, uh, the latter is my uh, research. I, I'm using the AI recognition system and robo robotic uh, arms to uh, separation those systems. So the thermal uh, pyrolysis system is the, the, the method is uh, close to high for them. So uh, for the, uh, the whole part, uh, PV panel still can do it. Uh, but for the uh, damaged panels and become has to be go through the crash and, and reducing the material purity and limiting the reuse of them. So an AI based the system is uh, use image recognition and the rob rob robotic arm to sort uh, crush the solar panels. So the uh, purely physical process and no thermal energy and the chemicals. So uh, we, we can do it now by, by themselves. And then uh, it's a high uh, purity recovery and uh, uh, enhance the direct reuse and then uh, reduce the incineration and, and the cost together. And this is the, how we can do it for the image uh, capture and then we have uh, the data uh, passing through the uh, re re uh, robotic arms to try to pick everything and in, into their uh, groups and 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 push them this is the uh, efficiency and accuracy of those uh, uh, plastic glass and copper and 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 plastic and sale their uh, uh, accuracy of the uh, identification. And this is the kind of uh, uh, our system is the is a crusher, a cloud blade crusher, and cut it into the uh, the the PV panel uh, pieces and 
mostly 90% is free particle and only 10%, less than 10% is locked particle. And then we have the recognition, uh, the table is here, and then we can uh, pick up pick up with the uh, robotic arms and into the, the different uh, several groups. This is how we can work in, in the future. Okay. Uh, this this this, uh, this is all I all I have to do. I I have some other the video, share. right? Yeah, mm. you have a video. Oh. I cannot find a share share button. Sorry. <laughs> Let's check it for you. Okay, you got it. Okay, yeah, yes, yes. That that's how we how we using uh, AI recognition, uh, the different pieces from grass and cell and plastic, and those everything, and we can separate from our robotic arms and 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 pick up them to to the different box to collect. And we can separate, uh, like like the picture, the show. We can separate very uh pure purely. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to that today. Thank you, Professor Chen. A very impressive, especially seeing that robot <laughs> picking up tiny bits. Okay, okay. Uh, good. Uh, actually, our timing is also perfect. Uh, actually, we have two questions. Would uh our speaker click the Q&A part and then to find the question. Uh, both were from uh, Jenkin. Jenkin, thank you, Jenkin Live. And I also have from our WhatsApp site, uh, I have other questions. So I could direct the question to uh, the first one to Ken. Ken, can you see the question? Any talk with the manufacturer of PV panel to step up? A consortium of PV manufacturer to form a recycle reproduction process plan or business. This will be truly waste producer liability. Okay, uh, it's a long question, so maybe you could digest it and then give share your view on this. Yeah, sure. Um, I agree that it's a uh, waste producer liabilities, but somehow, uh. As my fellow speaker says, most of the PV panels are manufactured uh, from China right now. Shipping panels back to China might be a little bit tricky right now. And um, I do think some of the brands uh, in China uh, do have the PV cycle labels, but I think they, um, it's a label for their, I think, Ur European... Uh, offices. So right now in China, I think they do have some kind of um, recycling process, but it is it will not be a total solution. And uh, if we would like to send the panels back to the manufacturer to deal with and um, to recycle the stuff, it will be a very long um process because i don't think they have a some kind of um developed the technologies in place right now so uh you mentioned about uh the pro processing development will be like 10 to 20 years lagging behind the um the uh waste recycle which i totally agree and that's why we do need to uh, work now to shorten that time. Uh, did I answer your question? Okay, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Jenkin. Jenkin has another question for Professor Chen. So, Professor Professor Chen, you can prepare for that. But right now, I have uh, on the other side the WhatsApp question. I think I would direct to uh Doctor Chow Hardy. Uh, he asked actually two questions, two from two persons. One is that. 
you mentioned about the three types of PV panels. Would there be any different handling in the recycling process of these three different types of PV panels? Uh, Dr. Yes. Chauhardy? Uh, thank you so much uh, for the mm. question. Uh, we, we do have the first generation and second generation, we, uh, we use almost similar uh, technology, but uh, for third generation, uh, I have done my research about the layer by layer separation. So it can be possible to, by using chemical, uh, chemical treatment only. So chemical treatment directly can isolate uh, the isolate the material from uh, glass layer, and it's about we are, I am talking about the perovskite solar cell, and also uh, second one I just add with my friend Keen that uh, the, the 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 responsibility. Just imagine that we are we are five stakeholder and we visited one island and we leave our uh, our ship. What we will do? We will blame each other? No. We need to work together because we have no option to back. We have no option to back actually what, what we need, but we can manage, we can, we cannot stop, but we can control. We need to work together. And I think another thing, uh, another question is about temperature. I can see the higher yeah. temperature. High temperature, yeah. high heat. This, this is, this is uh, right that the solar PB, if uh, temperature high, then efficiency low. So we have the solution. We can tree plantation uh, under the panel, so that can reduce the panel temperature, and uh, then we can we can uh, get the right efficiency. And as I mentioned about that, the, we cannot stop, but we need to work for next twenty or thirty years. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I so do now need to, back to I I, I oh. do want to add a few points on the okay. heat. Um, solar PV panels is something that it's um. Uh, Contrary to uh, everyone's point of view, solar panel actually hates heat. Um, the more it, uh, the hotter it gets, the lower the efficiency it gets because of the internal resistance. And so, um, what we call uh, I, the name slip out of my name. Uh, what uh, Doctor Shah says, uh, using the waste heat to um, maybe boil the water. Uh. CHP cooling is it... system, uh, some cooling oil system, and also yeah, uh, I think it's called combined heat and power. Yeah, CHP, right? And uh, this uh was the uh a not really that hot, but it's it's a research topic for a few years back then. But I think it died down a little bit. Um, but usually heat is not uh not lethal to PV panels, so. As long as you have a good um, um, you leave a good amount of space under the PV panels. Usually, you can counter the hit uh by 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 using that method. Okay, so now back to Jenkins' uh, question to Professor Chen: How accurate are the separations? How much unidentified fiber pieces remain in the batch? The sample video seems to be only 5% of broken down pieces of one PV panel. So, mm -hmm. Professor Chen? Yes, okay. Uh, the first step is the uh, PV, 5% uh, is only a, a small batch for this uh, uh, demo system. And so, if we can do it in in, in grow, uh, upscale, and then we can the uh, can treat the whole whole pieces in uh, in one batch. And uh, for the for the batch, the accuracy is very good because the uh, for the lock particle is not much uh, after our uh, cloud blade uh, crusher, and that I, I say that the lock particle is only less than ten percent. So uh, for 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 that unidentified pro, uh, the material, we will go through the other. Uh, a uh, recrushing system and go through the system again and try to uh, recycling uh, both the material uh, together in the second uh, phase. And so the, the accuracy is not a big problem in this system. And then we can take out that every very uh, clean uh, system material and back to uh, the PV industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Chen. I think we have uh, one last question that is applied for all speakers to address, uh, which is, uh, what are the government regulations 
in Thailand, in Taiwan, and especially also in Hong Kong for recycling PV system. Now, if there's any, so maybe uh, Ken, any 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 policy in Hong Kong yet? Sure, I will go first. Uh, in Hong Kong right now, there is no policy whatsoever <laughs> regarding solar PV panels. So everything goes into the landfills secretly. Secret. Oh, that's sad, huh? So that means we have to work hard to impose or to 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 to, to urge the government to do something. Okay, how about uh in Thailand, Dr. Chow Harry? In in Thailand, similar. Uh, actually, oh. what I want to say that the no existing technology, uh, sorry, policy in Asia. So that's why we raise our voice to implement the policy. Uh, collaboratively work with the industry, policymaker, stakeholder, researcher together. That's why we are here to make a collaboration to work for future. Thank you. Thank you. How about Taiwan, Professor Chen? Uh, okay. Uh, in Taiwan, we have the uh, collection system. It's different from PV cycle. We have the container with uh, 50 pieces together in the container and uh, government try to collect the container and back to the uh, recycling plant. And then we have a three license is issued from a uh, government to try to uh, recycling uh, uh, PV panels. And, but right now we still have very uh, big amount of this uh, uh, waste that generate. So we have still have to wait to three or five years more. And then we have the big project will be uh, brought down. And then uh, the system, we have already collect this system, already collect the, the money for the uh, collection and treating of subsidy. So, uh, and every, uh, every uh, panel right now is about 300 uh, Taiwan dollars per piece. So when they uh, get to into the wreck, into the roof, and then we have to collect the uh, collecting and treating money and then become the future uh, subsidy for the uh, treating systems. Oh, at least there is something going on. So yes. Taiwan is leading, yes. <laughs> leading the yes. other two, two places. Okay, yes. well, I think it's been a very fruitful uh, one hour that we share the different um, uh, understanding and the different practices in uh, different countries. And I uh, would like to thank you, three of you, on behalf of a Carbon K No Lab and the Hong Kong Jockey Club for a valuable kind of a time. So I hope we could uh, do some solid project hand in hand, uh, either on the country kind of a, uh, a city kind of perspective or our different NGO institution um, perspective. Okay, that will be all for, for this session. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.